Hi there, let's set up your workspace so A, we're both looking at the same thing, and B, it's correctly set up for our web design jobs. The workspace refers to how everything is laid out in Photoshop, where each panel is placed, what panels are open and so on. That's completely under your control and your choices matter a lot. Let's get to it. From the start, I have to tell you I have two main workspaces. One is for when I'm working at 2556 by 1440, which some call 2K. This is what I use when I'm working on a mobile app project. This means more things can fit in my workspace, so that's why you can see quite a few extra panels here. But when I'm doing web design work, I'm still a big fan of 1920 by 1080, which helps me size things correctly and with better accuracy. It's also the way most people will see my work, so it's ideal to view things from their perspective. This new workspace has fewer panels because I need to see more of my canvas. So let's get to work. I'll teach you how you can customise it so you can get the best layout. First, go to the top right side of Photoshop and click on this icon. From the list, choose Essentials. Now to be sure that we're looking at the same thing, click again, but this time hit Reset Essentials. Great. With the assumption that you'll use Photoshop mostly for web design work and you're currently at 1920 by 1080, here's what we're going to do. First, we'll close panels. This is done by clicking on this very tiny icon in the top right side. All panels have this symbol, so it's just a matter of finding it. Once you're there, hit close. You saw in that list another option called Close Tab Group. That's very useful when you want to close several tabs at once. For example, colour and swatches. We don't need these two, so let's click and choose Close Tab Group. Nice. You'll also notice that these panels have tabs. Here we have the Properties panel, which tells us a little bit about the currently selected layer. As I choose other ones, this area reflects that change. This is very useful for our web design needs. On the other hand, the Inactive tab, Adjustments, isn't needed. We could close it by using that list, but we can also drag it away. Just click the title, hold and detach it. You can, of course, leave any panel just to float about. I've seen lots of professionals do this on Macs, but I think that's not an ideal way of working, so don't leave any panel floating around. Either close it by hitting this X symbol, or dock it anywhere on the right side. To do that, grab it and start moving it. Photoshop lets you know where you're about to dock it by showing you this blue outline. So if I want it above the Properties panel, I'll just move it there. Release, and there you go. The other panel shrunk in height in order to make room for it. Let me drag it away yet again. You can also place it in between panels like so. See that thick blue line? If I let go of my mouse click, it's easy to figure out what's going to happen. Yep, there it is. But you can also dock it amongst several tabs. For example, here we have three panels into one region, layers, channels, paths. If we want to add adjustments next to them, just hover over this area. Now it's hard to tell what's going on, but through the magic of editing, I can help out. There's this little blue highlight next to the last tab. This shows you you're about to place it there. By default, your new panel is going to be the last one in the list. I'll let go and it attaches. We now have four tabs. But say you wanted it to be the second one in the list. Not a problem. Grab it and move it to the left. It's as easy as that. OK, let me drag these three away and close them off one by one. I like to use their X symbol for that. Now, I use libraries quite a lot because I'm working on several computers during the day. But it's not that important. So here's what I like to do. Grab it and drag it here to this tall yet narrow panel. As you can see, this has freed up a lot of space and now I'm getting more of my canvas. This is the ultimate goal. See as much as you can while still having all your tools available. I'll do the same with the Properties panel. This will give me a lot of room for my Layers panel, but that's great since that's one of the most important parts in Photoshop. You may think you'll forget what these icons mean, but here's a temporary solution for that. Move your mouse cursor at the left edge of this panel. Your pointer is going to change, and now you can resize it. As you drag towards the left side, the icons now get titles as well. You are taking away some canvas space, but this is better than having two full columns of panels laid out. We need a few more things and we'll be done in a jiffy. Working with text is essential in web design, so click on Window from the top side of Photoshop. 
From this list, choose Character. By default, this is going to appear in that narrow panel, but I like to place it above my Layers panel. It takes away about a third of its height, but I'm willing to make that trade. Alright, looking good. Paragraph is also important, so I'll set it as the second tab. Remember, just drag it and move it there. Here's something to keep in mind. If you double-click a title bar, it'll shrink. I don't like this approach as the right column should be visible at all times, so double-click yet again to expand it. I'll now resize this narrow area since I know all these icons by heart, and when I need to access a panel I'll just click it once. Of course we can resize these ones as well, for example the Properties panel should be a bit smaller. Go to its edge, and I'm sure you know the drill, OK, we're almost done. The History panel is the first one in this list and allows us to undo several steps. In general, this needs to be much taller, so enlarge it right now. As you go back to your canvas and do all sorts of things, these will continue to remain active unless you click on their icons or titles. That's how you can collapse them. A few other bits, though less important, you can change the toolbar on the left by clicking on this minuscule icon that's designed for elite snipers. This makes it occupy two lines, but I don't agree with any change that eats up your canvas space. You can also detach it from that side and place it anywhere. You can float it about or place it on the right side. I don't advise that, but know that you can reposition it. A cool thing you might want to do is change the background surrounding your canvas. Just right click and you'll get several options. This is especially useful when you're working on dark projects and you need to see your canvas edges. Remember to right click outside the canvas. If you click inside it, you'll get another list depending on your current active tool. Finally, let's save our work so far. Go to the top right and get that list once again. Choose New Workspace. Enter your name and check all three boxes. Now what does this do? Well, in case someone comes along and wrecks your setup like so, panel thrown everywhere and whatnot, you won't have to manually reposition everything. Instead, you can go to that list and choose Reset Chris or whatever name you gave it. Now everything is back on track. OK, now it's time for you to set up your canvas like you see here. This is what I consider an optimal setup. But be aware, mine is going to change from video to video because I'm working on various projects as I'm recording. You don't have to change it with me, but now you know how to do it. Stop the course right now and get to it. Have fun!